Hi guys. Imagine that. It just turned into another gray gloomy, fairly warm summer evening here. It is Saturday night in the collapse of global industrial civilization. It's supposed to be the full moon tonight, which I will not be enjoying behind the clouds, but uh, it is Saturday night, July 24th, 2021, but we're going to pretend like it's Sunday morning, July 25th, so I can bring you my Sunday sermon. The reason I'm coming to you on Saturday night is because a little dog and I, we are heading to Maine. We are heading to Maine and Vermont, and we're going to be gone for a few days, and uh, probably will not be a collapse till at least Thursday. I might get one in on Monday, but don't count on it. So I wasn't even going to have another rant until uh, the end of the week, but I want to thank the alert listener, Brother Tom Insulata. Once again, uh, he is one of the lieutenants here at Collapse Chronicles, keeping me knee-deep in doom. I was trying to avoid the mainstream media, but Tom has sent me this link from the good old New York Times by columnist Maureen Dowd. Anyone who knows Maureen Dowd at the, at the New York Times there's a lot of terms I could use to describe Marine Dowd uh, that I won't share here, but Doomer Chick is not one of them, but uh, even Marine Dowd from the New York Times is uh, has become our newest Doomer Chick. We would like to welcome uh, New York Times little lefty columnist marine out into the new Doomer Chick Club. And before I start this, guys, before I start her sermon, I guess this was Marine's sermon of the week. She just wrote this today. Uh, all, all of the jabs at Republicans, while Republicans usually are not my favorite people in the world, uh, Marine Dowd is, hasn't been down the rabbit hole long enough to understand this uh, has virtually nothing to do with Republicans and Democrats anymore. The difference between Republicans and Democrats, uh, it, it, you know, as far as what's going on this on this planet, is a joke. So I'm going to read her little uh, cheap shot jabs at Republicans with a little bit of a roll of the eyes. But other than that, small uh, criticism, I guess Maureen Dowd is pretty right on with her sermon this week. Apocalypse right now. Take it away, Maureen. Holy smokes, it feels like we are living through the first vertiginous 15 minutes of a disaster movie, maybe one called... The day after tomorrow was yesterday. Heat waves are getting hotter. Forests are ablaze. Floods are obliterating. An iceberg nearly half the size of Puerto Rico broke off from Antarctica. <coughs> Florida's fleur du mal, algae blooms known as red tide, have become more toxic because of pollution and climate change. They are responsible for killing 600 tons of marine life, leaving beaches <coughs> strewn with reeking dead fish. And I think this, uh, this 600 tons is so last week, Maureen. I think what I was reading yesterday, it was... Are we at a thousand tons of dead fish <coughs> and stuff washing up on the beaches of Florida? We left 600 tons days ago. <coughs> it's Mad Max apocalyptic. Crazy storms that used to hit every century now seem quotidian. 
overwhelming systems that cannot withstand such a battering. The heat wave that stunned the Pacific Northwest, killing nearly 200 people, well, it was a hell of a lot more than 200 people. I mean, there was 300 people just in Canada on the other side of the border of the Pacific Northwest. So, uh, counting them, the heat wave that stunned the Pacific Northwest and Southwest Canada, killing about 500 people, was followed by a bolt of lightning igniting the dry earth in Oregon. The bootleg fire has now devoured 400,000 acres with flames so intense they are creating their own weather patterns capable of sparking new fires. The smoke has traveled from the west to the east coast. Yes, it has, tainting the air. We have had uh, many days full of wildfire smoke here in New York from that Oregon fire. As Angela Merkel and is it Merkel or, Mer or Merkel? I've heard it both ways. As Angela Merkel and President Biden touted a climate and energy partnership on her recent visit here, nature mocked them. While the two leaders had dinner, rains submerged huge swaths of Germany, including medieval towns the deluge in Hainan province in central China was so fierce that it crippled a large hospital, left subway riders up to their necks in water, affected three million people, displaced 250,000 people from their homes, and killed at least 33. Flash flooding had Brits wading in waist-high water and the London Underground. More scenes of devastation are unfolding in India, where at least 112 people are dead after a monsoon-triggered landslides. As a New York Times story pointed out, whether systems were refurbished like New York's subways after Hurricane Sandy or operating on fumes from the Victorian area, era like London's drainage system, it didn't matter. The storms overwhelmed both the new and the old. There are wildfires raging in Siberia, and California is becoming crematoria. <clears throat> After Jeff Bezos, yes, Jeff Bezos, shot 60 mi 65 miles above Texas in his preopic rocket, the richest earthling marveled about our atmosphere. Quoting Jeff Bezos, the world's richest earthling, when you get up above it, what you see is it's actually incredibly thin. It's this tiny little fragile thing, and as we move about the planet, we are damaging it. This is, yes, the, I guess the now former CEO of Amazon, and the quote of the week, Jeff Bezos, as we move around the planet, we are damaging it. That's very profound. It's one thing to recognize that intellectually, it's another thing to actually see with your eyes how fragile it really is. Yes, that tiny little fragile thing according to Jeff Bezos. <clears throat> Remember when the weather was just a matter of small talk or a cool lyric from a Cole Porter song, Too Darn Hot? or a great double entendre title for a Billy Wilder comedy, Some Like It Hot. Now, the scariest thing on TV is the Weather Channel. We have been living in a culture of dread for a long time now. Republicans, Republicans 
have been weaponizing fear. Uh, okay, I said I wasn't going to break in here. I was just having a, uh, a discussion today with someone about the New York Times weaponizing fear. The, the New York Times has done more to fear monger uh, in the past year probably than any other organization this side of NPR. Okay, as, as long as uh, Marine Dowd is talking, yes, Republicans have weaponized fear as Democrats have. Okay, it doesn't matter. Republican, Democrat, whatever. Uh, Republicans and the New York Times <clears throat> have been weaponizing fear. This is Republicans have been weaponizing fear, trying to scare us about gays and transgender rights and ambitious women and people with darker skin. We won't talk about what the New York Times has been weaponizing fear over. <clears throat> when fear does not have a basis in reality, it is deeply irresponsible and causes great social damage. Yes, a, a, a columnist for the New York Times, when fear does not have a basis in reality, it is deeply irresponsible and causes great social damage. I can tell I could get this rant off in a red herring about uh, fear-mongering, deeply irresponsible fear-mongering caused by the little lefties at the New York Times and NPR causing great social damage. But obviously I'm getting off of uh, Maureen's rant and getting into my own, and I know that people on this channel don't want to hear about uh, when fear does not have a basis in reality, it is deeply irresponsible and causes great social damage. So we will head on. Uh, Republicans, yes, Republicans, not to mention the New York Times, invent things to provoke paranoia. Hmm. Anyway, let's get back to the matter at hand. But when it comes to climate, the fear has a basis in reality. We should be scared out of our minds watching the weather run amok. So this is uh, John Holdren, a professor of environmental policy at Harvard's Kennedy School of Government. and. Uh, of course, John Holdren. If you don't know who John Holdren is, talk to a Republican fearmonger. Uh, if you want to talk about uh, right wing fearmongering, just bring up the name John Holdren. But we're not going to get off on a rant about John Holdren. So, what does John Holdren have to say about? Uh, a reality-based fear. Quote, <clears throat> talking about climate change, everything we worried about is happening and it is all happening at the high end of the projections even faster than the previous most pessimistic estimates. <laughs> there you go. Thank you, John, for the uh, faster than previously expected, you know, this whole thing, uh, this faster than previously expected, you know, anyone with a brain is, is totally shocked how slow this is happening. There's nothing faster than previously. We've been expecting it uh, for 30 years. But anyway, back to Maureen. <clears throat> It may be too late for negotiating incremental change. 
We just went through four years of proudly unscientific Donald Trump who once told me, quote, I am not a believer in man-made climate change. We all remember when he made that famous quote to Maureen. And who can forget when he attacked Greta Thunberg and told her to chill. Donald Trump attacking Greta Thunberg, telling her to chill. As the planet sizzles, many Americans have gone from not caring to glazing over, from indifference to fatigue. There have been spots of progress, yes, antediluvian Republicans can no longer destroy opponents who worry about climate change by mocking them as sandal-wearing tree huggers. And here we go. In January, GM rocked the auto industry when it revealed plans to phase out petroleum-powered cars and trucks and move to zero emission vehicles by 2035. Uh-huh. The Times story about it was a pre-obituary for gas guzzlers saying, quote, Maureen Dowd quoting the New York Times, the days of the internal combustion engine are numbered, but there are still plenty of Republicans shilling for big oil. Yes, I just did uh, a, didn't I do a rant, when was that, about four days ago, pointing out that Joe Biden has approved more oil and gas drilling permits on our public lands than Donald Trump ever did in, uh, in the amount of time uh, that Biden has been in office that it has been since George, the oil man George Bush was in office, you know, after uh, campaigning to end uh, drilling on public lands, Joe Biden uh, proudly uh, signing off on more approvals for oil and gas drilling on our public lands than Donald Trump did in the same amount of time in his administration. Yet here we have, there are still plenty of Republicans shilling for big oil and pushing back against climate change provisions in the big legislation before Congress. As we go through the debilitating politics of corona panic, we have to go through the debilitating politics of the environment. Scary plagues are ravaging the planet while drivelers drivel. Yes, coming. I love that, Maureen talking about drivelers driveling, some hope technology can save us. In Dubai, scientists are plotting to combat heat waves in several ways, one of which would be sending aircraft to fire chemicals such as silver iodide into clouds to spur precipitation. Now, they've been doing this in the great state of Texas for years. You can, you can Google silver iodide spraying. Uh, if you live in Texas, for years you've been able to uh, get guys to spray silver iodide to, uh, to spur precipitation. This is not chemtrails, where this is a, a different thing we're talking about than uh, that she's talking about here, although the chemtrail wackos would, would say this is proof of chemtrails. No, this is proof that, uh, that we have been sending aircraft for years to fire chemicals into clouds to spur precipitation. I don't know why they're not doing that more in California right now. Where are these silver iodide planes? Anyway, 
and sending drones sending drones to zap an electrical charge into the clouds to trigger rain. Making waterfalls in the desert sounds cool until you think about it. Torquing Mother Nature to clean up our messes cannot end well. And then she closes in some French saying uh, that I do not know how to pronounce and would not know what it meant, although something tells me, I think uh, A-P-R-E-S is open, probably, and I think we can all agree that D-E-L-U-G-E, deluge, so, uh, it looks like it's saying open me deluge, but I don't quite think that's what it's saying. So uh, if you want more on climate change, we can also read some other future date. Joe Biden's monumental environmental gambit. And how about how to stop freaking out? and tackle climate change. Yes. Uh, all right, so uh, the New York Times is committed to publishing a diversity of letters to the editor, so they would like to hear what you have to say about Maureen Dowd's article, Apocalypse right now. All right, but anyway, I need to wrap this up, guys, and uh, good Lord, we have 12 people here at Bugs in a Jar Farm tonight. Uh, <clears throat> the house is full, the USS Maggie May is full, the tiny house is full, two of the three campsites are full, so I've been run out of my tiny house, I've been run out of my camper, so the little dog and I need to head up into the woods before it starts raining and uh, go sleep in our tent. We're going to go camping at Bugs in a Jar Hip Camp ourselves tonight since everywhere else is rented out. And uh, get up and drive to Portland, Maine tomorrow. I will see if I can get a short video out somewhere between Portland, Maine, and Vermont over the next few days. But if you don't hear from me and the little dog, we're off enjoying it while we still can, and I highly advise you to do the same. Bye, guys. Mr. Log, I think you're sleeping in the tiny outside, and I'm sleeping up in the woods. Are you coming up in the woods with me? What do you want to do? You want to sleep in the woods? You want to sleep in the tiny house? You just want to sleep on the table like that? You want to sleep near on the table? <laughs>